We're all aware of the feeling that we're being watched. Luckily for most of us, this is rarely ever the case. In 2011, a girl named Lauren Giddings had this familiar feeling, but had no idea how serious her situation was. On the final night of Giddings' life, her stalker recorded this footage through her apartment window. Lauren Giddings was a 27-year-old law student at Mercer University. She was finishing up her studies there and had been vehemently studying night and day for the bar exam. On June 26th, Giddings' friends and family stopped hearing from her, which was unusual considering she always kept in contact with them. After four days, Giddings' friends became suspicious and reported her missing to the police. They searched her apartment and saw that there was no sign of a break-in, nor any type of struggle. In a last attempt to find evidence, the investigators sprayed luminol in various parts of the apartment to look for any traces of blood. Everywhere seemed to be clean, until they made their way into the bathroom. The bathtub had become a literal bloodbath. This turned the case into a murder investigation. After further investigating the scene, the detectives found a trash bag containing the torso of a corpse in the dumpster next to the apartment. DNA tests later confirmed that this was, in fact, Lauren Giddings. While the detectives were out investigating potential leads, Stephen McDaniel, a person of interest, was interviewed by a news reporter. I mean, no, no, no one has seen her since Saturday. I haven't seen anything. I mean, you always hear noise outside, but it's just people walking by pretty much. McDaniel was a friend of Giddings who attended the same university as her. They would talk from time to time, and at one point, McDaniel asked her out on a date, which she declined. After Giddings went missing, McDaniel was a part of the search party that helped look for her. During the news interview, he explained how no one had a clue what happened to her. No, I mean, we're, we don't know where she is. I mean, the only thing we can think is that maybe she went out running and someone snatched her. At one point in the interview, the reporter mentioned that her body was found in the dumpster, and McDaniel's demeanor completely changes. I mean, we, we just don't know where she is. What about um, in the, like, the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? I, I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I think I need to sit down. Okay. Of course, this didn't initially seem that weird to the reporters, and this could just be a reaction of shock after hearing confirmation that his friend was dead. For the police, however, this only strengthened their suspicions. Keep in mind, the police only recovered the body from the trash can because the garbage truck was running a little bit late. Had they arrived just a little later, and that body would have been long gone. Up until now, the killer thought the body was completely disposed of. This puts an entirely new perspective on McDaniel's reaction. Okay, sir? I think I need to sit down. Okay. The detectives went to McDaniel's residence to have a talk with him, in which McDaniel's ended up admitting to entering people's apartments and taking things. With this, McDaniel's was arrested for burglary and brought down to the police station where they questioned him about Lauren Giddings' death. The full interrogation is available to be watched on YouTube. Take a look at how normally he was speaking during the news interview from earlier. Yeah, she and I, were we were both JD students. Um, we graduated back in May. Now take a look at how he was speaking to the detectives down at the station. I need to know about this girl right here. You know her? Yes. Who is that? Lauren Giddings. Does she live next door to you? Yes. 
he seems almost robotic. During the whole interview, he stuck to his story, claiming that he had nothing to do with her death. Tell me, bud. I didn't do it. Yes, you did, Steven. Your head's with the body. Quit lying. Luckily, this didn't matter, as the police were able to recover more than enough evidence in his home. Some of the things they found in McDaniel's home included the packaging to the hacksaw used to dismember Giddings' body, a master key to the rooms in the apartment building, a pair of Giddings' panties, and one of Giddings' flash drives that had hundreds of photos of her on it. On McDaniel's computer, they found in his search history several social media pages of Giddings and violent pornography. In addition, they found several blog posts where McDaniel's described torturing women. For all the supposed planning McDaniel put into this, he sure left behind a lot of evidence. After Stephen McDaniel spent 10 months in police custody, he finally confessed to murdering Lauren Giddings and received life in prison. He was also required to write an allocution describing everything that happened on the night of Giddings' death. The details are pretty gruesome. He wrote that he used a camera taped to a stick to stalk her through her window to see when she was alone in her room. We saw this footage earlier. Then, while wearing a mask, he used the master key that he stole to sneak into her room while she was asleep. As he entered her room, Giddings woke up and shouted at him to get out. At this point, McDaniels jumped on Giddings and began strangling her. During the struggle, she tore off his mask and saw who was doing this to her. Her final words were, Stephen, please stop. After he killed her, he dragged her body into the bathtub, where he cut her into individual pieces, put them in trash bags, and placed each bag in a different dumpster. For this reason, the police were only able to recover the torso. This is a truly horrifying case that only becomes darker as we try to imagine the terror that Giddings must have felt in her final moments of life. She had her whole life ahead of her and had it all taken away from her in an instant by a stalking lunatic. One thing that still isn't clear in all of this, however, is what McDaniel's motive was. There were no sexual acts that were carried out that night, but maybe he derived sexual pleasure just from killing her. Regardless, it's fortunate that McDaniels was caught so quickly. Judging by the planning that went into this, an apparent lack of clear motive, many people believe that Stephen McDaniel would have become a serial killer with many more victims had he not gotten caught here. I'm happy to say we won't have to find out whether or not that is true. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the flip side.